Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. Here we're going to talk about graphing modes again and specifically we're going to teach you how to save your graphs and recall them for later use. Uh, this can actually be really really useful especially if you've been graphing really lengthy equations. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put in an equation that we probably wouldn't want to retype in again. So what we're going to do to demonstrate this is go ahead and type in an equation here. Uh, that we might want to graph. So let's do x minus 3 uh, and then let's square this guy and let's add 4 to it. So this is a shifted parabola. It's kind of long. I mean I could make it even longer but you know it's it's something that's you know takes a little bit of time to type. So let's go ahead and watch the graph of it real quick and see where it lies. And we will see that it should be shifted right over here to the right and also up. And that's because of what I typed into the parentheses and also outside of the parentheses, the shifting numbers. Okay. Uh, so you have the option here in the graph uh, definition area. Uh, you can delete this guy, you can uncheck it or whatever, but what if you wanted to really just save this for future use? I mean, what if what if it were a really complicated equation that you really wanted to just kind of hang on to maybe two months from now, maybe you wanted to reload it in there without typing it all in so you don't make another error or a mistake and so on. Um, it's pretty easy to do. What you need to do is be in the graph mode here. All right, so once you're on the graph uh, screen right here, in order to save a copy of this graph for future use, you want to go into the Tools menu, which is F1. And you have an Open and a Save dialog, so let's go down to Save Copy As. And so you're in here, and this is where you basically type in the name of, of the file that you want. Now, it's important to know what does this mean, GDB, that's Graph Database. Basically, the long and short of it is you want to keep it on Graph Database unless you have a great reason not to, because what this means is that once you save it and you load it up later on and you open it later on in other words and you save it as a graph database then that means the graph is fully interactive so you'll be able to trace on it and zoom on it and do everything that you normally can if you somehow want to save it as a picture which I'll show you how to do in a minute then it saves the graph and all but it doesn't it doesn't leave any of the interactivity there so you can't zoom on it you can't trace on it so unless you're really running low on memory I mean you really need to save it as a graph database all the time All right, go down and you'll have an option to put it in a specific folder most people aren't going to care about that just leave it in main go down to variable uh, so just go ahead and you know give it some kind of name I mean you can type anything you want but let's just call it uh, C for right now so we'll just give it the letter C you can type in multiple digits if you like go ahead and hit save and that locks it in there hit enter to save it and now we have saved our graph so let's go ahead just to prove ourselves that we saved it let's go back into the Y editor clear it out hit enter go back to the graph menu and we see that everything has been cleared off so we see now that everything's been cleared away and let's go ahead and load that graph in that we've just saved so we go to F1 instead of saving we're gonna open it so we hit enter and it's a graph database in main. Notice that it already puts uh, everything that's already a graph database that is already saved there is, is listed right here. So our graph, which is listed as, as C, is listed there. If I had saved two or three graphs, then I could go and fly out and select among the different names that I have, but I only have one saved, so it's the only thing there. So I hit enter, and what's going to happen here? It should just go ahead and start graphing our function again. So it basically reproduces. Um, the action of going in and typing the function in again and graphing it again. So now if we go back to y equals, we'll see that our our graph is put back in there just like it was. We go back to the graph mode, we see it's there. We hit the trace button and we can we can trace this function like normal. We can zoom it. We can do everything that we can do otherwise. So that's why I say you really want to save it as a graph database, um, you know, if you can. Uh, because it's it's just going to keep the full interactivity. Now if we go back in here just to show you the difference if we go back in here and clear this and do let's do something different x to the third and then graph that guy let's let that guy graph up then I'll show you how to save it as a picture and show you the difference. So here we have a graph we go to the tools menu we save copy as notice it's going to default to graph database if we wanted to retain full interactivity which is what you normally want to do you'd, you'd save it there but instead of this let's go and save it as a picture just to show you the difference we'll go down here and we'll call this one D that's the next letter up uh, for picture so we hit enter so now it is saved 
So let's go back just to, just to absolutely show you. Let's clear out the function. So in the graph screen, there's nothing there. Now let's go and load this guy. So we'll go to open. Notice that it has defaulted to graph database. This is the other function that we uh, had just opened up just a minute ago. Let's fly this out and choose picture. And when we do that, then all of the pictures that we have saved are listed. And the only one that we have is D. If I had three more pictures, they would all be listed here and I'd be able to select. So let me select D, hit enter. And notice our x to the 3 function is immediately put back on the screen. It looks wonderful. But if you go and try to trace it, nothing happens. If you go and try to zoom, right? Let's see what happens if you try to zoom. Go over, down. You know, nothing really happens. Because what you have saved is really just a picture. You haven't saved the full interactivity of, of the... Uh, of the graph. So when you're saving it as a picture, it's literally just like a picture on a computer screen. You, you zoom in and you really, you, you don't, it's the math behind the picture really isn't saved, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And to show yourself that, if you go back to the Y equals menu, X to the third is not even listed here. Because when we were looking at that picture, it was just like loading a picture in the screen. It didn't actually put the function here and regraph it for us, it just showed us a picture. So really there's not a great reason to use the picture function to save it as a picture unless you know you just are really low in memory or if you uh, you just have a, a reason. I can't even honestly think of a good reason why you would do that. Most of the time when you're saving graphs it's because you want to interact with them later on. Now if you save 300 graphs over the course of a few years and you want to delete some of them uh, you can do that. Go over here down here to the var link menu, variable uh, link menu here. Second function var link. And this is really kind of a nice window into what's stored on your calculator. So you'll see your calculator may have a whole bunch of additional things stored here because you're using a real life calculator and you've been using it a lot so there's additional things here. But if you scroll down you'll be able to see that here is a picture file right and here is a graph database right here. So what if we want to delete the graph database? So you just highlight it and go to manage F1 and you can just hit delete. It says, do you want to delete it? Yes, you do. What if you want to delete D right here? You just hit F1. If you want to delete it, there you go. Hit yes, and it's gone. And then just to convince yourself of that, if we go back into the graph mode, F1, open, under graph database, there's nothing listed. And if we change it to picture, there's nothing listed because we've deleted them both. So it's a useful thing to have. Um, to know how to save these graphs, especially when you're typing in really long ones, or maybe you have two or three, maybe you have a system of equations that are all really long and you, you might use it for your homework later, but you don't want to clutter up the screen. So just go ahead and type them in and save it as a graph database. Later on, if you need to reload it during a test or something like that, then you can do that and have full interactivity with it. It can really save you a tremendous amount of time. So play with it, use it, and uh, it's one of those features that a lot of people, when they read the books on the calculator, you don't learn how to do, but it, it actually can save you quite a bit of time on an exam and on your homework.